So at this point, um, I want to open it up for some questions. I'm sure there are some questions. We've got uh, people live on the chat here, and I've got some people on the Discord uh, link as well. Um, so I'm going to open up the chat and see uh, what we've got in terms of questions. First question is, um, how can you convince managers that the data they are asking for from phishing exercises might not be very reliable. So how do you approach a manager basically um, to tell them, you know, I don't know if we're getting the most value out of this program. What can we do? Sometimes you'll find managers are just trying to get done what they were asked to do. So if it's an IT manager that's responsible for the program and you want to talk to them and say, you know what, um, there's some documented issues with this kind of approach. Are we addressing them? They may not care. They might just say, I'm doing these things. This is the way I'm told to do it. I'm going to do it. So you might have to go up at a level and try and find somebody in senior management or executive because somebody along the way is doing this to improve the uh, cybersecurity posture uh, and risk posture of the organization. Uh, it might be for compliance reasons. So there could be uh, just the need to say they've run them. And in, in that case, there isn't an awful lot you can do. So hopefully that helps, um, you know, just trying to engage with people, tell, tell the managers that there is some documentation and you can provide them with um, the phishing assessment optimizer uh, uh, download and uh, then discuss it with them. I'm happy to discuss it as well. Um, any other questions? So from Sue, how often should phishing simulations be run to be effective? So that's a good question. Um, you, you, as I said, you know, you might think, you, you should run them fairly often so you can get data and do a trend analysis. But as I showed, the trending data is, is hard to get right, especially the more often you're running them, the more campaigns you've got to create that are consistent uh, and in difficulty. So uh, it depends what your objectives are, but uh, I would say you want to avoid getting to the point where the messages can actually be spotted by people. So in my view, I think if you do it more frequently than once a month, that's a, a big risk that people are actually going to be able to spot the phishing messages that are just tests. And um, I would say my recommendation would be probably about quarterly um, is uh, about as often as you uh, can get good value out of. Um, I think there's uh, a lot of different considerations there, but anywhere between monthly and, and quarterly. Um, let's see. Uh, Sam says, um, does it make sense to do phishing exercises as well as gamified phishing training and assessments? Yeah, actually, um, it's actually, in my view, a complementary thing. There are reasons to do phishing assessments. For example, in the gamified environment, we can measure people's ability to make a decision in a simulation of uh, a captive you know, risk environment. It may not be um, as... Uh, pressurized an environment. Let's say, you know, when, when somebody gets a real email, they're considering all the other priorities in the day and they might be more prone to opening something if it comes in live rather than within the uh, gamified environment. So there is a little bit of, you know, a, a risk there. So I think that, you know, having phishing assessments once in a while can actually compensate for that. Um, but as I said, you don't want to do the live phishing assessments more than probably quarterly or maybe monthly, but you can actually do the gamified phishing uh, foundational courses initially, and then repeated gamified challenges that come once a month. And people don't, you don't have to worry about whether people are expecting them or not. They should be expecting them. And you should be able to keep their skills refreshed by continually doing gamified assessments. And the more you do that, the less often you really need to do the sort of audit type of live phishing simulation. So you could probably do live simulations every six months, uh, three to six months probably, if you're using gamified uh, assessments and training as well. Um, what do you do about uh, remediation for repeated clickers? So yeah, that's a common question that I get. Um, it's uh, certainly, you know, there, there are some places that are really strict, you know, they cannot afford for people to be uh, falling for these things. And I've heard someone say, you know what, if if somebody fails a phishing test three times, they, they're terminated, which sounds kind of extreme to me, but I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to say, yeah, that's the way to do it. Um, I prefer more of the positive incentives to say um, quite often there will be an escalation of um, activity. So the first time might be an IT security briefing, you know, one-to-one -one from a manager, or you might 
invite people to a, uh, a webinar um, and say, you know what, your attendance at this webinar uh, will impact your um, performance review uh, next quarter. That would be, you know, a pretty good alignment of uh, incentives to get people to make sure that they are uh, proficient. But in a gamified world, you know, you might just ask them to go back in and, and repeat the course and do better on the, on the uh, course because it's not something that they will have been able to memorize. There's so much interaction and randomness in it. Um, it really does test their abilities. And if they can reinforce their you know, ability to spot specific kinds of risks and then do better on that gamified uh, test, then that could be really the best way to do um, a remediation. All right. Well, it looks like... Uh, we're just about out of time. So I just wanted to ask if anybody would be able to type in uh, the chat what their best uh, memory of this session was. You know, is there any one thing that you learned about it, uh, in this session that you feel you should take away? Maybe you might want to talk to managers about um, or just something that you'll use to review your own phishing program. Um, I see on the Discord, there's Sue. Yeah, the rebellious employees. <laughs> That's fun. Um, yeah, you never know the, the people who will click on things, even if even if you have a program that says they're going to get some kind of um, you know warning. There's still people that will do it. Um, Sam says, talk to legal and HR. Yeah, so I mean, getting buy-in from the legal and HR groups is always good when you're doing any kind of a change um, or 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 a an activity that could impact the culture of the organization or people's um, responses to that. So definitely a good, good thing to take away. Um, gamification seems cool and valuable. Yeah, absolutely. And I do encourage people to, um, you know, try the, can I be fished uh, just to see what it's like uh, and then reach out if, if you'd like to set up a trial. All right. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. And um, I hope I was able to bring some value to uh, the session for you, things that um, you may be able to think about or take back to uh, the uh, management team and get their, uh, their feedback on, try and do something maybe a little different, more innovative, and get better value out of these things. So I'd love your feedback. And you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, even via our website. There's a little chat bot that has my picture on it. It'll pop up and uh, I'll, uh, I'll answer your question there or, or we can uh, follow a little bit of a discussion. Um, I just think it's important to get more people engaged in this discussion, understanding what those risks are, making sure management is aware of you know, the risks of what uh, the traditional phishing simulations have and also the, um, the benefits of, of trying something different like gamification. So I appreciate your support and hope to see you next time uh, and uh, have a great day and a great life. Thanks everybody. <laughs>